MNS Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, my dear friends. I hope and trust I find you well. We have a second installment as we wrap up for this week. May I invite you one more time to the book of Exodus. We are still in chapter 3 and we want to look at verses 5 and verse 6. It reads as follows. Do not come closer. He said, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Verse 6. Then he continued, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. May the good Lord Bless the reading of his word and let us spend a moment together in prayer. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, be our God today. Be our God as we go into this weekend. Be our God as you speak to us. Dear Lord, you are holy. May we reference your name for Halloween is thy name. Dear Lord, may we take you seriously. For this is our prayer of faith. May this be a new experience for us as we go into a study of your word. In Jesus' name we've prayed and asked, Amen and Amen. Just five points as we step into the weekend. At point number one, as we take off God has limits and he says, do not be too familiar with me. Why do I say so? He has called Moses. Moses, Moses. He answers, here I am. God has not only called him, he has even given him an attractive bedding bush so that he can draw close. But at verse 5, God now says, do not come closer. You know, the tendency is that we get so comfortable around Christ. We have heard and we have believed he is our savior. He is our brother. And in so doing, what do we then assume? Because Christ has said, well, I'm going to make you go as. We now assume Christ is one of our siblings. We can treat him anyhow and slap each other's backs. That is not how it is supposed to be. God is God. And he makes it clear, I have boundaries, I have limits. You are not going to just behave willy-nilly. There are certain points beyond which you cannot go. There are certain places that you cannot reach with me. There are certain conversations that you and I cannot have. There are limits with God. And God simply says this morning, do not be too familiar. As we go into this weekend, remember this, God is simply saying, know your place and give me my place. I am God. I am your creator. You are a creature. You are my child. Yes, I love you. Yes, I died for you. But that does not make us equals. That does not make me your body. God is simply saying, know your place and stay where you're supposed to be. At point number two. Now that we've gotten this out of the way, what are the expectations? God goes on to say, do not just remain where you are. Remove the sandals from your feet. Remove the sandals from your feet. Point number two on how to relate to holiness. How should we relate to holiness? They are some things that will not come into the presence of God. They are things that we use every day and in every place. They have no business in the presence of the Lord. God simply says, some things I will not have before me. Just know this and accept it. I simply say so. You stand where you are. I set the rules. Number two, take off your shoes. I set the dress code. I set the decorum. I set the deportment. I am God. What makes God God? The fact that he speaks to us. What makes God God? Because he makes the rules. He makes the regulations. If you cannot accept that there are rules and regulations, surely then there is a bigger problem. At point number three, he is God. He says, not only am I God, listen to me. 
I am the God of your father. I do not just relate to you, but I have been relating to your father before you were and to his father before he was and to his father before he was. God is simply saying, I am older than you are. I am experienced than you are. If you cannot trust me, surely what is your basis when I have been around longer than you have been? But, but over and above that, at point number three, notice this. He goes on to talk about Abraham. He talks about Isaac. He talks about Jacob. I'm going to get to those bit later on. Many a time we are quick and keen to relate to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But God says, I am the God of your biological father. Your biological father. I mean that father who is abusive. I am his God. I mean the father who is a humanizer. I am his God. The father who is irresponsible and a drug addict, I am his God. I am the God who relates to your immediate parents. Honor your father and your mother. I am their God. Then if, if you cannot honor your father and mother, what business do you have relating to me? I am their God. I am their God. Know this. He is the God of our fathers. It reminds me of the song. Faith of our fathers. Faith of our fathers. He is the God of our biological fathers and mothers. Point number four. He is the God of Abraham. Abraham of faith. He is in the hall of faith. This one is straightforward. What do you need in your life? He says, if anything you require, all you need is the faith of Abraham. As you are the son of Abraham, all you need is faith. And I'm the God of faith. Isaac, if you could look at Isaac, somebody described him and said, Isaac is a boring character in the Bible. He has no drama. He is just a straightforward person. And he is the God of the righteous. He is the God of the righteous. He doesn't end there. I am the God of Jacob. Jacob, not Israel. I'm the God of Jacob. Remember, he was Jacob the usurper and he became Israel for he wrestled with God and won. And he says, I am the God of second chances. I will give you a second chance. I will give you a second chance. I will give you a second chance. Are you ready for that second chance? I am the God who gives second chances. And above all, if you know I'm the God of your father, if you know I'm the God of faith, if you know I am the God of the righteous, if you believe it, I'm the God of second chances, what will stop you from veiling your face and fearing the Lord your God? Who has brought you to what you are today? Nobody should tell you how you should conduct yourself before the Lord. But if you know him, you will reference him. He is not your buddy. If you know him, you're going to take time to listen to him as he gives you commands in his word. That's what makes him God. If you know him, you will appreciate his experience. He has faith to give. He has righteousness to give. He has second chances to give. Fear him and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. On the mountaintop, we are yet to learn. Blessings and peace to be continued. See you on Monday, my friends. Good day.